Hi everyone. So next we will look into the next important component within the Docker ecosystem, which is container D. Now we all understood that daemon is the process which basically tracks with the the agent, the Docker agent running on the machine, and it's the uh, it's the daemon is the the process which has the responsibility of fetching the container related images or other image layers and store it locally within the system whereas container d is another important process which basically has the constraints stored within so now as we all know containers are lightweight processes and they are regular unix processes and what makes them different from a virtual machine is containers control the operating system resources as we discussed early whereas a virtual machine multiplexes the hardware resources associated with the machine now uh, in the case of container d it stores the namespaces and c groups associated for that container so the c groups are the stuff which basically contain uh, things like the CPU usage associated with a particular container process and you can also control the memory limit, you can control the I.O., you can control the, the, the translation locuside buffer. So there are plenty of things that you can do with the C groups and the namespaces are the, the entities within the operating system and you actually associate a container process with a namespace which essentially means that there's a you're defining a boundary within which a particular process needs to operate and the most important thing to understand is how does the communication between the docker daemon and the container d happen the, doc, the communication between docker daemon and the container d happens through the google rpc protocol and there's a container create method which has been defined in, within a golang program so as you all understand docker has been written in golang and it has uh, a container create method defined within which basically associates a container process with a namespace and c group so let's look into the details of namespaces and control groups so as i said earlier control groups put a limit on the resource usage and namespaces provide a mean to isolate the containers. Right, so let's look into what, what do you actually mean by that. So there are different namespaces that are available within the Linux ecosystem. So the first namespace is the PID namespace. And what it essentially means is each container will have its own process tree. So the process tree of the container has uh, has from a user's, user standpoint, no binding on the on the operating system's process tree. So the operating system's process tree will exist as it is, but each user process will have its own process tree as well. So it's a virtual, we can say it's a kind of virtual process tree. Similarly, network. Now, the network interfaces that are available on the host or the guest operating system on which this container is running will have its own uh, will be totally independent and uh, well, probably they can be shared also there are certain scenarios where you can share the the network interface but for the most part you you won't do it in the in the case of docker kind of applications and each container will have its own virtual network interfaces similarly mount points each container will have its own root file system so the docker basically uh, creates a mount point on which the root file system is uh, established and all the container uh, co uh, container related files will be within will be boxed within that mount point where the where the root file system is created for that particular process Similarly, this, there are this IPC, UTS, and user namespace. So, you know, the user namespace, you can be a, a root user within a 
container but you might be a regular user on the host machine or on the guest machine on which the application is running similarly uts each container can have, have its own namespace or I mean, have its own host name and uh, this is independent of the host name on which this particular container is running so these are the different namespaces that you can see we'll get into the details and we'll have an exercise to establish what we are saying because you know these terms there are, there are myriad of things and these terms might be uh, difficult for someone to understand in the first go itself so we'll have exercises to establish all those things on this control groups part there are different control groups that you can put a process into so there's a cpu control group so the cpu control group will say that you know this container process has no rights to use more than 20 percent of cpu so that is one thing that it can do or you can have a cpu set we can say that you know 50 percent of the cpu is available on this machine belong to this particular process similarly you can imp impose constraints on the memory where you know you say that this process cannot have more than one gig of memory one gig of ram available or you can put restrictions on the io devices right you can say this particular process cannot write into more than two devices or so probably it can use it can write into the hard disk associated with the machine and nowhere else or probably it can write into the the teletag terminal associated with the device and only the hard disk so you can impose constraints like that now net cls is interesting because you know that you can control the network traffic um, both inbound and outbound from the container. So that is something interesting. And as we discussed earlier, slash devices. So devices, you can devi define the devices in which you know you can uh, can also control the devices to which this particular machine, the container, this particular container connects to. Freezer. So free this is another interesting functionality. You know, you can freeze the container. So it's something like you know you have job scheduling within the kernel so you freeze a container then you carry out the rest of the tasks and you come back and unfreeze it and you know the container is reactivated from the state what it was earlier in so these are the different control groups there may be there are more but you know these are the most important ones that one needs to understand as part of the understanding of containers namespaces and groups we will do a small exercise on something called ch root so the first thought that someone will have with respect to container jail or container isolation is is docker using something called ch root uh, to basically isolate the process into into a folder structure or a file system structure well you know ch root comes with its own set of limitations and problems and that is the reason why you know uh, docker decided to use the mount point as the uh, as a point for root file system and not ch root so we will do a small exercise on ch root next and we will also look into the details of the namespaces all these different namespaces we will predominantly focus on the three main ones which is the pid network and the mount namespace in the next exercise Thank you so much for listening.